Welcome back to another video from the garden. Today we have had a super heavy frost this morning. Um, you'll see if you look at our small holding vlog for the week, which is all about the small holding side of things, not just the gardening side of things. I was out feeding the horses in the pitch black at minus two this morning. It was ridiculously cold, considering that only a couple of weeks ago, it was 16 degrees at five o'clock in the morning. Just bonkers. Anyway, I've come out into the garden. I've got an hour-ish before it gets dark tonight. So straight after work, sun's already going down and I wanted to see what's happened um, to the beans and to the squash that's over just behind me because of the, the frost from this morning. So if we have a look together, the reason I want to look at the beans first um, is because I need to harvest them. I'm harvesting some of these for seeds for next year for eating. I wanted to get some fresh, but I'm not sure if that's going to be an option anymore. We'll just take, well, it looks like it may be. I'll show you what they look like in just a minute, but the beans will not survive the frost. So these will just die off literally now. Um, it's just, just a matter of a couple of days before the leaves will blacken and that's it. There'll be no more growth on these. Um, so middle of October, done. And then I can get these out of the ground, get this covered up, get it mulched. There'll be nothing going in this over the winter where all of the beans are. We'll get the structures taken down and then I can just let the worms do their thing over the winter. But the reason that I wanted to get out and do this tonight is because it is going to be soaking with wet with rain for the next few days according to the weather forecast. And these beans will just get really, really wet again. They've dried now. I've left them as long as possible. I just hope that this morning's frost isn't going to mean that they've frozen and now that they're going to go mushy. So fingers crossed we're still fully able to eat all of these beans and save some for next year. So I don't know if it's obvious on the camera, but can you see how these leaves have already started to blacken off and look very sad and just wilt essentially. So these pods here, this you can see this is a pod that I showed you guys last time where I was just leaving them to dry. These now sound rattly dry, which is just fantastic. So I'm gonna remind myself what's what from a variety point of view. I mean, look at this, how sweet is this? This little flower that has been affected there by this morning's frost is still wanting to grow bless it but yeah really pleased that we've got some at least we'll have eating over the winter with these even if i don't keep them for seed and the reason i say even if is because i want to make sure that i'm keeping the varieties that um i know are what varieties so i had there's some barlottis down here which you can see the red fleck against the contrast they turned out to be dwarf thought that they were climbing beans because um, you get both uh, climbing and dwarf. Never mind. I think the beans in here, so these are cobra, right? You see, this pod is really damp still. But these are black beans in here. So they're the cobra. I don't think they're an F1 because these were actually shop bought, these ones. Um, one of the only ones. Doesn't say that they're an F1. So hopefully I could save some seeds from those. I will have a good tidy up. So I've got my little box. I brought some compost out in this box. Look at the height of this compost heap. <laughs> and I've just got my box that had the uh, compost in it, all of the food scraps. Now I'm going to fill it with beans. Oh, look at the robin. Heard me. So I've picked all of the beans off the Greek Gigantes and Bolotis at the moment. Now I have to say at this point, this is not the normal way of doing it. You would harvest them before the first frost. I didn't expect to have the below zero temperatures that we've been having or that we've had today. Um, we did have a frost and it was middle of the week and I didn't catch the beans before that happens. However, they will all still get used. So if I was trying to keep them all for seed, it probably would be a problem. But what I've decided is I've gone a bit bean mad next year. I'm, I don't know what's got into me, but beans and winter squashes are gonna be top of my list next year. Absolutely loving what I'm seeing at the moment. So really excited about that. So I'm not too worried about keeping the seed from these because the Cobra variety, um, for example, that you saw with the black bean in, they're a French bean and normally you would obviously eat them young and tender. Um, from what I've read, you can keep them and you can eat the bean dried, the black bean inside, you can dry them and eat them as you would any other dried beans. I am probably going to freeze these because I'm concerned with the frost that we've had this morning. I'm seeing some of the kind of um, like the squishy side on the outside of the beans on the pod itself, not the beans. Um, so I'm thinking that they might end up getting ruined. If I try and dry them, I might just lose them completely. So I think I'm probably just going to bung them all in the freezer and just use them as I would dry beans. So we'll come to that when it comes to cooking. Um, the other reason I'm not too worried, as I say, about keeping the beans for seed is because I have got a lot of beans already that I've ordered for next year, which I'm super duper excited about. 
the Greek Gigantes, I may try and keep some of those because this is the second year that I'll have kept those. Um, as in, sorry, they were fresh seeds last year and it would be keeping them to grow again next year because that's a variety I'm definitely going to be growing. Not too sure about that. The Tsar beans that were sort of very kindly sent to me, I got them in too late, as you know, because obviously you kindly sent them. I think, was it Carly? Apologies if I've got that wrong. Memory of a sieve. Um, I got those in late um, because you kindly sent them to me when I obviously didn't have them in the first round of beans so they haven't come to anything this time unfortunately because they were put in too late um, probably going to get some of those for next year I need to do my um, veg plan my plot plan for 2024 because I really do I really do have a lot of beans and squash already um, the beds are going to be so productive again next year really chuffed I mean the things that we've had this year the coal rabbi first time I've ever had such successful coal rabbi broccoli's been amazing cauliflower's been terrible I had a good a couple of good ones that we missed because of the holiday typical anyway not doing a plot review at the moment so yeah the beans that I'm harvesting I'm going to pod and I'm going to get them in the freezer I've made that decision not going to try and keep any possibly the Greek gigantes not going to try and keep any else any of the other ones for seed saving so this isn't kind of the normal way of doing this I am um, absolutely you would pick them young tender eat them younger and tender then dry them before the frost came etc etc so just doing what I can with what I've got this year let's just have a quick look what damage the frost has done you can see here these nasturtiums have um, really really suffered and the pineapple sage this did not really get going this year at all outside um, so I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about this because, um, excuse Stephen in the background, I've got one in the greenhouse that overwintered really well in the greenhouse so may just bring the pot out next year and we'll see anyway. Um, the Cape Gooseberries, what a flipping nightmare they've been. They are just a complete jungle as you can see. Um, and I don't think I've got a single Cape Gooseberry in there, but I well, There's plenty of the fruits. Oh, I've just walked through a cobweb, but they're just nothing in them. They're just completely, hang on. Sorry, I thought I had a spider on me. Um, that's what they've come to, absolutely shocking. Maybe when I take them out, there'll be some that have developed that I haven't seen or got to yet, but I won't be doing those again um, in that polytunnel anyway. That polytunnel has been really good for tomatoes. Um, not peppers, not cape gooseberries, not cucumbers. It's been okay for the tomatoes, it's been good for the tomatoes. So I will be growing tomatoes in there again next year, but hopefully next year we'll have the new polytunnel. Though Stephen keeps saying to me, don't, don't build your hopes on it that it's, not, it's going to be done in time for growing season. It may be a bit later in the growing season, more for the winter growing season. Anyway, um, what else have we got? I don't see any other damage. The mizuna and the mustard are looking really good despite the frost, which I think they prefer cooler temperatures, don't they? Got a couple of little flowers that are throwing up here. So these are gonna be featuring a lot on the menus coming up. A few of the spinach are trying, not doing very well though. Um, and the mizuna is drying out, drowning out rather, some of the spinach there, but we'll see. Beetroot seems to have uh, tolerated the frost okay. And these carrots, my goodness me, we have been eating these carrots. They are absolutely amazing. They've been fantastic. See if I can get pull one out for you while you're here. Just utterly perfect. That's actually quite small compared to some of the ones I've been getting, but utterly perfect. I'm so pleased. You stay there, I'll come back for you. So pleased with them. Um, look at this, the squash. I was keeping that courgette to be like a giant marrow for uh, dehydrating into flour. I think it's just gonna be chicken food now. It's completely died off in the frost. Um, I'm gonna get all of these harvested. So these are radish. Not sure if it came to anything. It was a bit of a um, throw it in and see. Oh look, there's been the flipping mouse or something again. What a pain they are, honestly. These won't come to anything now. So if nothing else, as I say, good for chicken food. I'm going to get this bed cleared. There's other beetroot that, obviously I thought the, sowing the beetroot um, when I did, I can't remember if it was August time, I thought they would still come to something, but clearly for my neck of the woods, it's just not, you know, I'm looking at these ones here. It's just not giving them enough time for a second sowing. So I'll revisit that next year, but still got absolutely tons of beetroot in the first sowing, which, we're still harvesting and they're going down really, really well. Um, see if I've got the, so July, 2nd of July, that one went in and clearly just hasn't had a long enough growing season. 
I mean, these could stay in, but you can still eat these, but goodness me, you're not going to get very far in those, are you? But yeah, we'll, um, we'll get all of this bed harvested. And then this is another bed that can be topped up. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in these just yet, but tonight is all about the beans, getting those off and getting them in the freezer. Um, I've been thinking about them while I've been at work today, trying to concentrate on what I'm doing, but thinking, oh, should I try and dry them? Should I try and this? So anyway, the other beans that are on there are those cobra that I showed you with the black beans inside. I'm going to harvest those separately in a different um, box. And also the runner beans, the white Imergo runner beans. They have got some really nice beans inside as well, but I want to keep those separate to the Greek Gigantes just in case I do decide to grow um, those Greek ones from seed next year rather than harvesting you. Real seeds where I get them from might not even have any in, but these are the, um, these are those runner beans, which are quite a nice size. Some nice big beans in those as well. Oh, fly. Right, I'm going to get these picked because I've got other things that I need to get done tonight as well. Right, I've come in the shed. These are the runner beans that I've harvested. Some of them are really, really small. Some of the other ones you can see the size of them in the pods. Um, again, all of these will just be used for eating. I'm not worried about keeping the seeds from these. However, I wanted to tell you a little story. So all of this seed madness that I've been telling you about, that I've been ordering um, different varieties of beans um, and winter squash, I had some delivered. I've been looking on eBay, looking all over the place for different local, well, not local, but UK growers who grow their own and then just send the seed on to other people rather than uh, commercial companies. Now, I found some lima seeds um, from a UK grower and they kindly sent me 10 organic seeds. Um, when they arrived, let me show you the envelope without um, the envelope has been cut open by what looks like a knife or something. Oh, don't want to show the address. Look at that. So by a knife or something. Um, and then the part of the inside, the envelope inside, where is it? Oh, I've just ripped it there. Now, the envelope inside has also been cut open. That's not like accidentally ripped open. That is completely cut open. And they left me two of the smallest, scabbiest seeds. Oops, I mean, at least they left me two. I couldn't believe it. This had then been put back into the main envelope with the address on and put around the other way so that there was, it kind of stopped the two seeds that they'd left me with falling out. I couldn't believe it. How cheeky is that? So um, I have been in touch with the seller and they have kindly offered to send me um, some re replacement seeds. So I'm going to pay that forward when I've got some spare seeds from hopefully a successful growing season, I will be paying that forward and uh, sending some other people some seeds as well. So watch out. If there's anything in particular, by the way, um, that you see me growing the, of the bean seeds that you really fancy, let me know for the following saved seed season um, and I'll hopefully try and keep some to, to share the wealth as well. But yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was really, really cheeky. It was one of those where I was like, gobsmacked. Nothing normally uh, stops me from knowing what to say. Anyway, that's me done for the night out here. I just wanted to make sure that I got harvested those beans. Um, and now I'm going to go and get them potted and in the freezer and do a little bit of research of the best way to cook them from frozen. Well, it's blue skies today. So it's Saturday when I would normally be starting the video, but I got a bit, bit of a head start earlier on in the week because of the, the bean problem or the bean harvest. It's not a problem, I guess. It's nice to have. Um, so today is actually Sunday because yesterday we had the tail end of storm Babette and I arranged other things thinking it was going to be a really bad day um, on Saturday because I've got quite a lot of things that I want to get done outside. Um, so it's actually Sunday today. It's just finishing up some of the jobs that I've got started and now obviously with work etc etc next time I'm out I've still got some of the onions to finish off. The rest of those garlic to get planted so they're going to be what is it like a week behind which is absolutely fine still plenty of time uh, from getting the garlic in the ground point of view so just really catching up um next week so as i say sunday today so the week coming up i've got hopefully um a couple of evenings when i'll be able to get outside looking at the weather it looks like it'll be on my side a week today the clocks go back for us here um, so after that, it's going to be really difficult for me to get out on an evening. So I want to make the most of this next week. I think there's only one night that we're not going to be in um, after work. So hopefully in the next video that you see, I'll be able to catch up with a few things then as well. I'm going to get started. I'm looking at things thinking, where do you get started? I've come out without a plan, which is very dangerous. I really like to have a plan normally, as you guys know. 
but I'm going to get started, I think, with the greenhouse, as I said, even though Rodney, sorry, got distracted. Rodney's just come skidding over and the decking outside my shed is so slippy. So he, he went to stop and carried on going. <laughs> so it distracted me a little bit. Um, there's a couple of other things that I'm doing today that are not garden related that Stephen's helping me with. So I'm going to have to work around his availability as well, because today is his only day off. Anyway, as I was saying, sorry, um, I'm going to go in the greenhouse <laughs> even though I'm talking about it not raining, I could officially, in theory, do this um, in the rain, is clear out the last of those tomatoes. The ones that um, I'm overwintering are looking really good. We'll have a look at those first. Well, this is them. So the good news, there's two, there's two sets of news, good news and bad news, as always. The good news is this variety, the Country Taste, is looking brilliant. It actually looks healthier than it did in the summer. So I'm thrilled with that. They're already producing new side shoots. If I'm going to take off um, this side shoot and pop that back on again, there will be more than I actually need for next year. But obviously all of these might not make it. So that'll give me some choice next year. Really thrilled with those. But that all of those are the same variety. Now, the bad news, the one that I really wanted to work hasn't. Um, so this is the big mama that's just uh, not looking very good at all. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any other of the, I can't remember if it was the big mama or the super mama, but, mama, but regardless, they are both F1s, so, so you can't, um, I've never had any success keeping seed from F1s. I know people on here have mentioned to me that they have, um, but I'm not going to give that a try just because it's. I need every bit of space that I've got. So that plant's not going to, I'll keep it, but it looks as though from the stem at the very base, it's a pretty rotten colour. So I'm not sure that that's going to um, that's going to come to anything. But these are the ones I'm absolutely thrilled with. So it just shows the importance. If you're going to keep the side shoots to keep the um, F1 hybrid plants to overwinter them, you know, take a couple because one, I'm all out now, now that that one's failed. Um, it's a shame because that one is the big plum variety, but I do have some Amish paste seeds already that I'm going to be trying for next year. I'm not going to put any more of these F1 seeds in. I'm just going to put seeds in. If I haven't already got them, if I've got them, I'll use them, but I'm not going to buy any more F1s or hybrids. Um, I've got the Amish paste and that hopefully means that if they come true, um, sorry, not if, come, if they come true, if they grow well, I'll keep the biggest tomatoes, keep the seeds from those and try and keep those ongoing every year. I don't want to be buying F1 seeds where I can, if I can avoid it uh, moving forward, so that's the plan there. So it's a shame that one hasn't worked. The country taste have, um, we'll just have to see how far into the winter we manage to get. If I can even just keep one thriving for next year, I'll be really pleased about that. Right. Next job. So this is the site in the greenhouse at the moment. I would need it to, some net for the garlic that I mentioned. So that's actually been uncovered for a week or so. I'm pleased because um, the garlic and the onions rather, the birds haven't had them out just yet, but we do have cats here that I've mentioned before. That's why I want things netting as well, not just for the, um, you know, for, for the birds. The idea is I'm going to figure out which of these nets will fit the beds the best because I've got a variety of sizes that I can't remember. I'm not doing it for warmth or anything like that, purely for protection. Um, so I need to get these back out now that the storm's passed and find which ones will fit best on those nets. And at the back there, the jungle that was previously shown to you is still a jungle. So all of that is getting whipped out today. Any of the tomatoes, you might be able to see a cat step over these nets. Still a few nice ones there. I'll check the varieties and we'll keep the seeds of those if that's a variety that I want to keep. But apart from that, all of this is coming out and I'm going to try and get a couple of barrels of muck in each side and at the back there. We'll just see where we get to today because it's um, typical, isn't it? I always plan to get a lot done and things take so much longer than I plan. And also, can you see <laughs> the remains of the storm on the greenhouse? Goodness gracious me. We're getting there, we're getting there. I've got a barrel full of the tomatoes, the greenery. I've got one little bit that's decided to go into some of the, work, the um, framework of the greenhouse there. I need to go get the rake now and just give it a good rake. I found a couple of unpleasant surprises from the neighbour's cats in there. Um, so obviously when the greenhouse has been left open during the day in the summer, they've been coming in and living the best life amongst the tomatoes, which is disgusting. So. I mean to figure that one out for next year because obviously it won't be staying open now with the weather etc so we'll figure that one out don't let me forget um rake rake all of the last bits and pieces get it in the barrow pop it on the compost and then hopefully can get a couple of barrows of muck from the back of the barn now at the moment I can't get to the back of the barn um because we've got the fencing up because look horse's first day out 
Lydia's busy eating the trees. And Sonic's finished off a hairnet, which means there'll be trouble soon, because once they've finished off the hairnets, they tend to look for mischief. So I'll ask Stephen to give me a hand getting them into the barn, back into the stables. Um, it's always easier with two, two hands or two sets of hands um, and then I can open these gates and not worry about any anybody escaping or disappearing to where they shouldn't be. Go and get some um, muck from the back of the barn and start filling in some of these beds. They are really really dry because obviously I haven't been watering for the tomatoes to ripen. I have kept um, the bloody butcher was it? Oh my goodness I literally have remembered now I've forgotten. I'll come back to you. Right, must get on. It's actually getting a little bit dark now. It's uh, blue skies over there, if you can see through the through the greenhouse, but grey over there. Whew, getting there. There we go. So obviously there's no muck on this. I say obviously because it's not even changed colour. There's still a few of the tomatoes peeking through. Now, I'm pretty sure that these tomatoes that I put to one side um, are the bloody butcher. I'm not bothered that it's split a bit. It just means that it's really ripe. So hopefully those seeds will be extremely good. The other ones were those little tiny, hang on, I've put some in here. The little tiny uh, orange, which is sun gold. They're an F1, so I won't be keeping those. And these other ones here are the Gardener's Delight, which I'm not totally thrilled with, to be honest. They were nice, but I prefer the Bloody Butcher. So the only ones I'm gonna be keeping seed from this year are the Bloody Butcher. Now, look at these. These are those uh, broad beans that we sowed together. And the reason that they're done inside is just to give them a fighting chance. Because as you can see, even in here, things still come and chew the ends. Even at this time of the year, the rest of these plants are looking really healthy. But um, there's still something that's attacking. This one here just hasn't grown very well. So these, one, these were the ones that I rescued. Really happy with what's come through. The different types of kale. There's Portuguese, I think there's a Sutherland. Can't remember, they'll all eat exactly the same. I think that one is the um, Tuscan uh, Cavallo Nero I've since learned is that's how you say it I used to say it wrong mind you I say most of my uh, varieties wrong I think these peas are the Kelvilden Wonder um, again these were sown I think all on the same date the 7th of October these will go outside I haven't got them in here for the warmth or anything like that this is purely for the um, uh, just to protect them so these will go outside as really early peas there's pretty good germination well it's really good germination i think the only one is this one that hasn't got complete germination there so really pleased with how these do and i'm taking these tomatoes in the house these are officially the last tomatoes of the year so next up is to get some of the barrows of muck um and start filling this i'm not sure if we'll get that done tonight because i don't can you see the orange in the background that's Stephen who uh, needs a hand with a different job so we'll see where we get to but just in case I don't get a chance to say goodbye I'll update you on the next video as to where we got to this is fantastic I'm really pleased with where I've got to for today I've got a massive barrel full of the tomato for the the tomato leaves for the compost heap so I'm going to go and take that on give Stephen a hand and then we'll see where we get to tonight I will see you on the next video it may be a small holding video or it may be another gardening video either way I look forward to talking to you if you don't mind give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to leave me a comment because I love chatting on with you guys I'll talk to you very soon hopefully